Hello everyone, welcome to daily current affairs session and welcome to ACE online. So we will see the current affairs of yesterday as well as today because yesterday was a Sunday, right? So let us see briefly what are all the articles that we are going to cover for today. First one, there is a report from World Health Organization related to Go Global Hepatitis Report and this is the first comprehensive report released by World Health Organization. So the data that has been put in the report is very very important right so we will see what actually is the hepatitis and what uh, what is the virus that it causes the hepatitis and what type of hepatitis virus are there how they can be prevented so all these things we will see in detail and finally we will come to the report the data that is given by the world health organization right next patriot air defense system so it is a type of air defense system where if missiles come so this defense system can reflect back those missiles so we will see uh, this uh, in detail as well the mechanism and who gives who prepares all these things we will see so this is again a, a little bit bigger article we have already discussed this previously uh, but again this was there in you so that is the beauty of current affairs you will keep on doing it multiple times and then you will be able to remember right so voter uh, verification audit trial system so we will see vvpat audit system as well in detail and then doxing a type of cyber crime uh, we a very brief article so we will see what actually the uh, definition and all right then pay satellite of nasa indian ocean observing system so it is not a satellite rather it is a system uh, with the ships and then boats so we will see this as well where india and us are planning to restart again this program right then again one more disease after hepatitis whooping cause or oh sorry whooping cough so this also becomes very important as part of the science and technology then world cyber index again cyber related crime so we'll see the index as well so this is science and technology article this is international relations ir vvpat polity then doxing again science and technology science and technology we have a number of science and technology articles this is also science and technology and environment right woofing cough again snt so there are number of science and technology again world cyber index science and technology we have a number of science and technology articles today so this becomes very very important uh, for current affairs right so science and technology questions environment questions are mostly asked from the current affairs that's why you need to have a strong grip over the science and technology and environment of current affairs right so these are all the articles that we are going to cover for today I hope my voice is clear and uh, the video is also proper, right? Yeah, very good evening, Srinath. Welcome to the session. Let's start without delay. The first article for today is Global Hepatitis Report of 2024. So what is the context? India has accounted. There was a title in the Indian Express that India has accounted for the 11.6% of total hepatitis disease of the world right so world we have a 800 crore and population and we have 200 plus countries out of that india has accounted for 11.6 percentage of total hepatitis cases so this is the context the report was released by the world health organization right but now what what is important for us is not just about the details given in the report but you need to know about the hepatitis disease as well how it is caused what actually is the virus or whether it, it is a bacterial viral disease and what type of hepatitis are there so i'll show you one question was asked in upsc 2019 prelims i'll show you at the end so properly understand remember the fact then you will be able to solve the question at the end right so here uh, about the hepatitis it is a inflammation of liver so what kind of disease for example if it is covid then if it is lack of oxygen it is affecting our breathing condition so you can tell certain feature so this hepatitis is caused when there is a inflammation of liver so there is a you may also ask what actually is inflammation sir inflammation means swelling swelling or irritation of any part of the body it becomes reddish color so even if uh, the small infl inflation or the what you call a swelling caused due to even small injury can be called as a inflation or uh, inflammation sorry so inflammation causing at the liver right so liver is a body part 
the inflammation caused at the liver the body part is termed as hepatitis disease right not all the inflammation of liver is uh, you know called as hepatitis the, you have to remember that not all the cases but the inflammation is occurred because of hepatotrophic virus so this is important so inflammation is a disease caused by inflammation of liver right caused the inflammation of liver by the hepatotrophic virus so if this virus is the reason then only it can be called as hepatitis and we have a number of viruses which cause uh, this uh, inflammation of liver under hepatotrophic virus hepatotrophic a hepatotrophic b hepatotrophic c hepatotrophic d and then e so that's why we have a disease of hepatitis a hepatitis b hepatitis c so these are all the viruses the different viruses hepatotrophic viruses and the disease the result of this virus right so that is called as a disease hepatitis a hepatitis b hepatitis c and hepatitis d e as well right so this is the uh, disease that about the disease now the most important thing is the question was also many times has been asked about the different types of hepatitis how they are caused uh, has there any treatment that you need to remember so we have seen a b c d e or viruses right hepatotrophic viruses and the result is disease that is hepatitis a b c d e or uh, th these are the disease now let's know about the transmission how this disease occurs i mean the transfer from one person to other person and how they can be prevented whether there is a vaccine or not that also you need to know and finally treatment whether treatment is there or not so treatment is nothing but after causing the disease can we solve that or can we remove the disease that is called as the treatment but prevention means even before occurring the disease can we prevent it without occurring into the humans so that is the prevention the difference is this is before the causing of disease and this is after causing the disease this you need to know for each of the hepatitis disease so hepatitis a is transmitted this hepatotrophic virus are transmitted from contaminated food and drinking water so this virus is usually found in the contaminated foods like for uh, eating you i mean eating the foods after one or two days without freezing them in proper temperatures or consuming the contaminated water impure water so this viruses there is a chance can be transferred so always try to have a healthy food and healthy contam uh, i mean non contaminated water so this is how the virus can be transferred into the person and then how can this be prevented there is a vaccine so if vaccine is provided easily we can prevent it so there is a proper measure we have to remove this disease because we have a vaccine if there is a no, there is no vaccine then maybe yes uh, you can give an exemption but here clearly we have a vaccine right it can also uh, eliminated or prevented by practicing the good hygiene there is no treatment very very important thing so there is a slogan many times prevention is better than cure right so here prevention is always better because there is no treatment once you get this disease that's all there is no treatment still research is going on next hepatitis b it is contacted through blood fluids from blood transmission it can be through injections it can be from sexual transmission right it can be from any direct contact of the blood right so this is also we have vaccine hepatitis a and b we have vaccine we have also we can uh, blood screening so there is a lot of prevention measures having a good hygiene and there is a treatment for this there is a vaccine as well as there is a treatment even after occurring the disease we can uh, you know treat this with interferon uh, interferon is a protein that is released by our body when there is a virus when there is a virus attack into our human body the protein that is released by our human body to fight against the virus is called as interferon so this protein is taken uh, and made as a medicines so this interferon based medicines can be directly given to the patient who was uh, you know occurred with the hepatitis b right then blood to blood contact the hepatitis c can be transferred from blood to blood contact so this is the uh, you know approach where this disease spread now there is no vaccines there is no vaccines at all right so just that you can practice good hygiene conditions 
avoiding shearing needles or razors in the uh, you know hair salon shops so this there is a no vaccine so there is good measures that we need to take right now this is there is a treatment called direct acting antiviral drugs so like how hiv is being treated with the antiviral drugs so there is a antiviral drugs to treat this disease the next one hepatitis d this is also affected from blood to blood transmission and hepatitis one more important thing here to observe from hepatitis d is people who gets hepatitis d was already affected by hepatitis b only if the person is affected by hepatitis b then only he or she can get the hepatitis d this is one important conditions to be remembered right so we have a vaccine if we could able to prevent hepatitis b then there is no chance of hepatitis d itself right so that virus cannot be transferred so this is very important uh, thing and avoiding needle sharing all these things are same measures as that again interferon based uh, treatment we have there finally hepatitis e this is also transferred like hepatitis a through contaminated food and water practicing good hygiene there is no vaccine for this again hepatitis e we don't have vaccine so just being safe is important and also there is no treatment for hepatitis a and hepatitis e we don't have any treatment so these are very uh, you know dangerous but most of the cases that we are facing are hepatitis b and hepatitis c hepatitis b itself is 83% of total cases and then followed by hepatitis b right or uh, hepatitis c so these are the more dominant uh, uh, disease that is are being spread from hepatitis virus now is this clear yeah very good evening is this clear about hepatitis uh, disease how they are spread using the different virus with the name hepatotrophic and then we have a number of divisions within hepatitis this is very very important diagram right so if this this is clear now let's move to the data given by world health organization they have given certain data which are very very important for our exam they will ask for sure because this is the authentic data given by world health organization bangladesh china ethiopia india indonesia nigeria pakistan philippines russian federation so all these countries that five six countries together are contributing for two third of total disease so out of the total cases of hepatitis uh, the two third of the global uh, two third are being contributed by just a half dozen of the countries right so this is a very important point to be remember and india is one of the countries so this is also to be remembered next the according to the report the this is the second leading disease which are causing the deaths every year after tuberculosis tuberculosis is the most dominant disease that are rising to the millions of deaths after that hepatitis is the second most dangerous disease which is happening with the deaths right and of this the total hepatitis cases as i said earlier 83% are caused by hepatitis b and 17% is by hepatitis c so almost 100% it was there and rest of the hepatitis are almost negligible 0.001 right so that's why these two are the most dominant disease in the world this statement is very important we'll show you the question as well next one more important point half of the burden of chronic hepatitis b and c infections were seen from the people of 30 to 54 years old right so most of the cases half more than half of the cases are from 30 to 50 years of age people and then 12% from the children right and out of the gender men accounts for 58% of cases because of the alcohol consumption right and then non hygienic practices because men are more potent for this disease this is are the data given and why india is vulnerable why india is vulnerable the article also talks about the india's condition the doctors has said that the main reasons why india is affected by hepatitis is high population density so there is a population density is lot of people living at single geographical area right so that means what there is a lack of cleanliness and all right so here high population density and then lack of awareness of symptoms so the symptoms are not shown immediately by the lot of virus so because of that it got delayed and then the it will affect the you know fatality case of india and then 
screening and treatment, lack of screening and treatment, not othering to the access to good hygienic conditions. So, these are the reasons why India is more potent to this particular disease, right. Next one also says that high consumption of alcohol, especially in urban areas and then obesity, uh, metabolic disorders, lifestyles that we are having, we are not able to do daily exercise, right. So, all these are also being contributed to the lack of immune system of the humans to fight against the virus. So, these are the reasons why India is facing the hepatitis deaths, right. So, that is of hepatitis, any doubts in this? Very important article, very, very important because of uh, the, you know, uh, importance of India where it is contributing a lot of uh, deaths for this disease, from this disease, right. Any, any doubts in this? You can ask if you have not understood any of the point. Next one, Patriot Air Defense System. Patriot Air Defense System. So, before going into the uh, discussion of the article, let me briefly tell you how it works. For example, this is the Indian Territory. I am just giving it as a rhombus symbol, right. So, this is India for example and all throughout the borders, we will keep all these trucks you can see here. So, this is the truck. You can keep here all the trucks in the borders which have radars which have radars. Radar means using remote sensing or the sensors, we can detect which missiles are coming into the Indian borders. So, for example, if Pakistan has fired a missile towards India and this trucks will have a air defense. So, this will hit this missiles and collapse them in the territory itself, right. So, this is how it works. Anti-air defense missiles means, anti-air defense system means, which can shoot out the missiles which are coming into in our boundaries right, using the sensors and all, right. So, this is the mechanism of anti-air uh, defense systems or anti-missile systems, okay. So, why we have taken this article, very small, uh, small articles in the Hindu international paper was published that Germany said it will send the additional Patriot air defense systems to the Ukraine. So, that is what we have, that is why we have taken this article, you can see here all these have radar uh, scientific sensors and all and then shoot out the missiles, right. Now, let us know facts about this patriotic defense system. This is also called as MIM-104. They may ask you this name also, patriot system is also called as MIM-104 and the full form is phased array tracking radar for intercept on target. See here, the name itself is giving us the clue, phased array tracking radar. So, there is a radar which is tracking the missiles coming into our geographical boundaries and for intercept on target. So, it will intercept the missiles which are coming into our territories, right. So, this is the full form and this is one of the most advanced air defense system of US Army. So, this is not of Germany, but it is of USA, very, very important. So, this belongs to USA. So, Germans have bought this and now they are going to give it to the Ukraine. So, this is very important point to be remembered and this is all weather surface to air missile that means from ground where the truck was stayed. So, this will be shoot down into the air once the missile come. So, it will clash and it will uh, collapse that right. So, it is a surface to air defense system. So, this is also important and it can hit any of the missiles. It can be ballistic, it can be cruise missiles, it can be advanced aircraft, aeroplane as well. So, it can crash any of the targets. There is no restriction and it is developed by USA as we said and within USA it is developed by Raytheon, Raytheon company, private aerospace company in the US. It is not US government rather it is of Raytheon private company, right. So, these are all the facts and features the capacities also you need to know for the exam point of view. It is a mobile system that means no need to, no need to fix any place even from one place to other place we can move because it is having a truck which can carry. So, it is a mobile system rather than a stagnant one and it has all the supports of radars, missiles, whatever they want, everything is mounted in this truck, right. Then the missiles can reach more than 24 kilometers of height. Can anyone tell what is the uh, troposphere? I mean, we have atmosphere over earth 
and we have a tropo, troposphere, we have stratosphere, we have mesosphere, we have ionosphere, we have exosphere. This is a uh, what you call pattern or arrangement of our atmosphere. Can anyone tell what is the height of troposphere, the first layer of atmosphere? Can anyone tell? Yeah, so if not it is around 10 to 18 kilometers, that is how you need to uh, you know prepare whenever you are doing it, think over it, how can we compare it. So here there is a thought, it can reach to 24 kilometers height, that means you need to think, can it cross the tropos troposphere, the first layer, can it go into the stratosphere, that is how you need to think when you are reading, you will remember the facts, else you will forget, right. So here approximately 10 to 18 kilometers is the thickness of the troposphere. So it can even go beyond troposphere and reach the stratosphere, right. So this is uh, one fact to be remembered and the distance is 160 kilometers. That means up to 160 kilometers, whatever the missiles come, so it can hit. This is also important thing. Height is 24 kilometers, till 24 kilometers they can reach and distance is 160 kilometers that it can target, right. So it can track up to 50 targets at a time, it can sensor 50 targets that are coming into those regions and at a time 5 can be collapsed. It can visualize or it can identify 50 targets at a time, but hitting can be done only for 5 at a once, right. So this is also important uh, fact to be remembered and it has a track via missile guidance system. That means the computer software, this is a software which can track the missiles entering into our territory, right. So that is about the, yes, right Santosh, uh, around 10 to 20 kilometers, fine. So that is how you need to remember, right. Any doubt in this? This is more of factual in nature, you can easily by heart it, understand the mechanism, how it works and then remember the facts, that is all, okay. Next one, VVPAT audit system. Voter Verified Paper Audit Trial System. We have discussed this early, but again we are discussing it because it is there in news. So why we have taken this article? This was taken from Hindu, the Hindu newspaper. So there was an article where they have explained that there was a lot of criticism on Election Commission of India that they are not able to do VVPAT for all the constituencies, all the booths, right. So we will understand what actually are EVMs and then we will see VVPAT and then we will come to the criticism, what is the demand that people are doing, people are demanding from the election commission, right. So here first let us know about the electronic voting machine, you might, if you have already voted, you might be aware about it. So this is the electronic voting machine, earlier we were, we used to have the paper, you need to tick mark it and then fold it and then keep it in the box earlier, but now we are digitalized everything. So EVMs are the simple electronic devices which can record your vote and store for certain period, right. So that is the EVMs and this has two units. Within this electronic voting machine, we have a two units, one is control system, right, and then ballot unit. Control system is the software that it can store all the data and balloting unit is where you need to press the button and uh, the recording of vote happens, right. So EV displays, EVM displays the names and the symbols of the candidates. This was many times asked in the exam. So if you observe here, the candidate name and then symbol are attached, that is all, nothing is there. There is no other, uh, uh, you know, symbols, there are only two things, that is names and then symbols of the candidates, right. So the first use of EVMs has occurred in Kerala way back in 1982. Way back in 1982 itself, we have used the EVMs. but we do not have any law that is permitting the use of EVMs because that time we do not have EVMs with a good number. So we were just testing, we have used it in Kerala, but there is no law. Everything that we are applying should have certain rules and regulations. If it is not mentioned in the rules and regulation, then Supreme Court will check and it will quash. So there is no rule or law related to the EVMs, use of EVMs in India. That is why Supreme Court has quashed this. Uh, uh, mediation of conducting EVMs and it has asked to conduct the paper, paper based voting, right, it has quashed. So even though we used, we did not able to count it and give the result, we have went back it. So because of that uh, nature that the event, 
the government has amended RPA Act 1970 oh sorry 1951 RPA Act 1951 and enabled the provision within the act they was amended and they clearly mentioned that EVMs can be used for the conducting of elections. So government has done this in 1989 this will also be asked in the exam. In 1989 the parliament enabled the provisions under RPA Act to conduct the EVMs to to conduct elections through EVMs right. After that for the first time it was used in 1998 in few states like Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Delhi we have used this 1988 just for a trial basis. Finally in Goa assembly elections of 1999 this is important we have used the first EVMs across all the constituencies in Goa right. So, this is the first elections that we have conducted with the proper measures. After that in 2020, 2004 general elections, the Lok Sabha elections, all throughout India we have used the uh, EVMs, electronic voting machines and EVMs are manufactured strategically by two organizations that is Electronics Corporation of India Limited, you need to remember this and then Bharat Electronic Corporation. India Limited. These are the two organizations, only two organizations which have authority to manufacture the EVMs, right. So, this is the fact about EVMs. Now, let us know about voter verifiable paper audit trial system, okay. So, when you vote, there is a, for example, this is the EVM and a box is attached to the EVM. Once you vote the, once you cast the vote here, then immediately there will be a paper com coming out of this box, it will show the uh, name of the candidate that you have voted along with the symbol, name and uh, the symbol and then they, it will stay for 7 seconds and immediately it will fall into the box. So, you cannot take it, you can just see for 7 seconds and automatically it go into the box, right. You cannot even take out, take that, right. So, this is the voter verifiable paper audit trial system. So, it is a cross checking of whether your vote went to the intended person that you want to vote, right. So, this is the uh, role of VVPAT and then uh, the slip paper is not taken by the, uh, the voter, right, you, we cannot take that, that you need to remember. Now, VVPAT was for the first time used in the Noxan assembly constituency, this is very important in the Nagaland, 21 polling stations for the first time we have used this in 2013 this year is also important, right. And India is the first country in the world to use the VVPAT to cross check the words, right. The fact need to be remembered. Now, what is the existing utility? Before knowing the demand, let us know the existing utility. As I said earlier, paper or printed slip is visible for only 7 seconds and you cannot take that, you can just see and the, it will go into the box. So, this is the, uh, you know, existing uh, thing and then Election Commission has mandated that for every constituency randomly one polling booth will be taken. We have number of polling booths for every constituencies and randomly one booth will be selected and they will check whether the votes of each of the individual has matched with VVPAT as well as the EVM, VVPAT and EVM has they matched or not they will cross check. If not then there may be some discrepancy, right. And it was later increased to 5 polling stations per assembly seat. The Supreme Court has asked to increase it and that is why election commission has increased randomly 5 polling booths in each of the constituency. So, this was increased, right. Now, what is the demand? What is the demand of the many people are demanding because there are, uh, you know, a lot of politics around this, right. So, what they have demanded is each and every slip has to be matched with the EVM, not just booths of 5 booths in the constituency, each and every booth, each and every vote has to be cross checked. Then only we will uh, come to know that whether it is true or not. So, that is the demand and one more demand is now they are the paper is for uh, you know it is can, it can be seen for 7 seconds and it will automatically go into the box. But now the demand is the, uh, the voter can take this paper and then see and then put it in the box himself or herself rather than the machine, right. So, this is the demand, the current demand from various sections of the people.
right and what election commission has responded many times it has responded that there were 38156 vv pads which were checked by the election commission till now till now they have checked this not a single case of transfer of vote has happened whatever evms it is showing the same was replicating in the vv pad there is no single case of transfer of vote from one person to other person right so it has said that similarly there were complaints of 118 crore voters in the last few years many people have complained this and all went with the false case so the all the complaints that were made were false right election commission has responded with this answers because of demanding of 100 percent match and it also said that 100 percent matching will take lot of time so elections results will not be immediately announced so it will take lot of time it will be a tantamount to the early days when we were taking four one week for continuously uh, you know checking the elections and announcing the result right so this is the case of vv pat and evm any doubts in this any doubts please respond if you have not uh, understood uh, any of the uh, thing that we have discussed we have discussed what actually is evm and then vv pat how they are connected what is the facts around it what it is shown and then what is the demand what is the response of election commission right fine let us move to the next article this is a very small article we will complete in just a minute so why we have taken this article again this was published in indian express hindu and most of the economic times most of the newspapers have covered this yeah thank you for the response great now why we have taken this article a woman in mid february mid of february a woman has reached out to the mumbai police through the twitter now it is called as x right so through the twitter she has up uh, you know uh, requested the mumbai police to file a case related to one person who has shared a video of her so she was dancing somewhere it is her privacy right isn't it so it is our fundamental right to have uh, our own enjoyment so she was dancing somewhere and it was recorded and it was posted uh, to her it was sent to her and said that the dance looks like a sex worker so it was a humiliation for her she went to file a case with the mumbai police right now what is this doxing what is this matter and why it is related to the doxing doxing means the act of digitally publishing person's own private details in the digital media right so any details of the person personal details were put it in the digital media anything it can be any social media or sending her in whatsapp whatever may be so doxing means it is a digitally publishing the personal details without the uh, consent of the person so that is called as the doxing now this person who has shared the video of her who is dancing was recorded without her uh, you know permission and then that was shared to her right so it means that is called as the doxing the phenomena is called as doxing a uh, doxing generally publish high amount of personal data they can also uh, ask money and all background right so emails ids medical uh, you know details so whatever all the personal details can be noted down right so this measures also been given in this article what type of measures can we take to contain this adjust social media settings facebook settings whatsapp settings whatever use strong passwords that nobody can have your details and then report through national cyber crime reporting portal so these are some measures where we can take especially the women need to keep in mind so such events has to be taken care with the measures right so that is doxing very short article i do not think there is a lot of thing to be uh, un understood here very factual thing next article pace satellite pace satellite nasa is now the context why we have taken this article nasa is now publicly distributing science quality data from this particular satellite right so that is why there was a publication in the hindu indian express and all now before knowing why it is sharing data and all let us know what actually is a pace satellite that is how the questions are framed this pace satellite has a full form plankton aerosol cloud and ocean ecosystem plankton means marine plants the green color formed through microorganisms or whatever so plankton are a green 
microorganisms which are living in the oceans and then aerosol means small dust that are in the air which can also contribute for the rainfall because moisture can be absorbed and then that can be result into the rainfall. So aerosol is nothing but a dust in the air, very micro dust in the air. Cloud you all know, so clouds that we see and then ocean ecosystem right related to the oceans. So this is the full form of the uh, uh, what you call pay satellite. Now tell me, we have discussed many times in the previous sessions, this is sun and this is earth. So here the uh, you know satellites can revolve around the earth. But what we call it as a satellite which is revolving in the vertical manner. Can anyone tell me? We have discussed this many times. What is the satellite which is revolving around this orbit vertically around the earth? What this is called? Just three, four days back itself we have discussed. Anyone? Yeah, what is that? Vertically fine, but what is that? It is called as the sun synchronous orbit, sun synchronous orbit. This is a geo synchronous, means earth is revolving around like this and then orbit is also in synchronous with the earth, geo means earth. Geo synchronous means earth synchronous, but sun synchronous means because it is observing the sun vertically like this, right. So vertically it is in synchronous with the sun, sun will come towards latitudes, right, vertically it is imaginary moving. Yeah, very good, most of you have answered this, some students have answered this, very good. So this is a, this space satellite is a sun synchronous satellite, that means it was kept in the sun synchronous orbit to observe the uh, earth right the primary science instrument we need a payload also right whatever the instruments that are carried by the satellite to observe the things are called as payload and the main payload here is ocean color instrument so it will observe the ocean color blue green dark blue dark green whatever may be it can microly observe and then it will tell the health of the ocean that yes some algae is there in this region so the uh, you know fisheries all these things may vacate this region and humans also will not move into that region. So measures can be taken accordingly, right. So this is the main instrument which can observe the oceans. Similarly, this observes in various spectral, we have a different electromagnetic spectrum as I said earlier, radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, gamma rays. So this instrument can observe in the micro, uh, you know, multiple uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Also it has a two other instruments called as, you no need to worry just to understand how the satellite is working, right. So especially those pre preparing for civil services or group 1 uh, or state PSC highest exams, those people has to remember for group 2 and uh, the second level, third level exams, you no need to worry, they won't ask you. In answers in the mains exams, they may ask you this for people who are writing civil services and state PSC highest exams. So there are two instruments, other instruments apart from ocean color instrument, there are two more payloads, spectropolarimeter for planetary exploration. So this is for ocean specific and this is for other things, clouds, uh, observing the dust, all these things. Similarly, hyper angular research polarimeter, this is also angular polarimeter means polarization, the light, all these things can be measured using, using this instrument. So these are the two instruments used for accurate measure of earth changes that is happening right and the data will be helpful for to study the microscopic life in the ocean. The satellite, the pay satellite that we are talking about, the main aim is to understand the microscopic life in the oceans. Similarly, particles in the air, right. So here you can see it will observe the plankton, greenness, greenness of the ocean and then identify the plankton. Similarly, aerosol, cloud and then ocean ecosystem, all these things can be done by the pay satellite, right. So these are all the same objectives, it can measure the fisheries health. So this satellite can also tell the fisheries health and then harmful algal blooms, air pollution, wild, uh, wildfire smoke. So all this related to environment, not only oceans but also forest and all can be measured, right. So these are the measures that uh, satellite can be observed. And the scientists can investigate how the oceans and atmosphere interact with each other. So all the things related to atmosphere, ocean can be 
measured by the satellite right so that is the objective of the satellites next article indian ocean observing system indus indian ocean observing system and why we have taken this article india and us have decided to reactivate this indian ocean observing system this is not a satellite don't confuse this is not a satellite but there is observing scientific instruments in the ocean itself through small small ships small boats buoys i will show you the buoys as well Dif different instruments are kept in the ocean itself it is not the satellite so indian and us is decided to launch this relaunch this uh, recently right now let's know about indian ocean observing system what it can be done initially it was launched to observe the monsoon system in india so we have a monsoon system southwest monsoon and the northeast monsoon right coming from the equator trade winds coming into the indian territory and then trade winds going back right so geography it is a lot of complex thing to explain here it will take lot of time anyway we have two types of monsoon southwest and northeast monsoon so this indian ocean observing system was initially launched to observe the monsoon system in india but now later it is changed to climate modeling it can take it can measure anything are related to climate in the indian ocean region it can be related to the disasters it can be related to the cyclones it can be related to the droughts right so anything can be measured and it was launched in 2006 and how it is measured it will have ships different ships it will have and then the buoys so it is called as buoys right so these instruments you can see here yeah these buoys have instruments which can calculate the depth what type of animals are living what color is going so all these instruments are placed in the ocean right so you can see here this is how it is placed even in our tanks the water tanks we use buoys when it is full it it will give alarm right so this is all the buoys which we are talking about right so how it works they will establish these instruments in the oceans and then it can measure using all these spectrum there is lot of technical mechanisms you no need to worry just understand that buoys are placed some boats are placed and then data is collected related to the oceans and given it to the desired organizations and then we can contain cyclones droughts in our region right so in this they are using 36 moored buoys so the total buoys used are 36 moored means tagged right tied to something in the high seas to know the data related to the ocean this buoys measures various parameters of ocean like sea water salinity and then ocean currents atmosphere humidity wind speed so everything related to oceans can be measured using this buoys right and the objective as i said high quality oceanographic and meteorological data is given for the respective organizations that's how we can contain uh, the disasters any doubts in this very direct act article you just need to know the mechanism how it works and then facts you need to remember right next one woofing cough the number of cases of woofing cough has increased in china recently right again very very important article the factual in nature woofing cough it is nothing but a continuous cough with a big sound that's why the name called woofing the name comes from the louder cough that we perform when we occur this woofing cough right so it is a highly contagious infection which affects our respiratory tract so we are having a respiratory tract which can take oxygen and then give back to the give back carbon dioxide right so this is a caused by the bordetel bacteria so this is not a viral disease but a bacterial disease this is caused by the bacteria it will stick to our see the process i'll let me explain how it spread the a uh, bacteria will stay in our respiratory tract and it will promote certain throat lining toxins right our esophagus whatever we are, we are breathing so the bacteria will stay in our tracts and then it will produce certain toxins and then there will be swelling occurs so we cannot able to breathe properly because of the itching and all those things settled there the toxins so we continuously do the coughs with a louder voice that's how it can occur in the uh people so and it can also lead to uh death as well so because of lack of uh, proper breathing so it can also cause the death right so it is caused by bacteria and then affecting the respiratory tract by releasing the toxins in the throat and it severely affecting the infants that is 
uh, the child, the children. So the, it is made more complex in the children. And this is found only in the house, uh, humans. Very important fact is it cannot be observed in any of the animals. It is exclusive to the humans, right? So this is also important. And there is a vaccine for other disease. The same vaccine can be used for the whooping cough as well. Diphtheria, tetanus and uh, pertussis. There is already a vaccine for this disease. The same vaccine can also prevent the whooping cough, cough right? So that is about the whooping cough. Now you need to know how it is caused, bacteria, virus, all these things, in which part it is affected and only humans. So these features you need to know, right? Very small article. Then the last article for today, World Cyber Crime Index. It is a report, again factual one. Recently, an international team has compiled the first ever, till now there was no such index, first ever World Cyber Crime Index was published. Right? So that's why we have taken this article. Now, what is the report? Who released it? Before going into the details, let's know which organization and how it they have calculated this report. This was done by Oxford University with the help of University of New South Wales in the Australia. So these two organizations have conducted this data, collected them. They have done surveys of 92 leading cyber crime experts through 92 leading cyber crime experts. They have collected all the details by asking questions. Have you affected by cyber crime? Which type of cyber crime have you affected? What type of consequences you have seen? All the details were collected from different people and then they have made a report. And over 100 countries were ranked based on their complaints, the survey based on the details, the data given by them. More than 100 countries has been uh, estimated with this, right? And the major it identified global major cyber crime hotspots. So, which countries are more prone to cyber attacks? So, this was about the report. Now, what observations the report has made? Certain details are important for us to remember. First one, the threat of cyber security or cyber crime, not security, cyber crime is not even in the world. Some countries are affected more, some, some countries are affected less. So, it is the cyber crime is not even across the world nations. This is the first observation. Then the small number of countries uh, houses the greatest cyber criminals. So certain countries, small number, some 5 to 10 countries having the highest number of cyber crime. Other countries are very safe and they do not have uh, too much cyber criminals, right? One more thing, certain cyber crimes were associated with the certain countries. Like India is affected by certain type of cyber crime like phishing or spamming, whatever. Uh, different countries were affected by different type of cyber crimes. It is not uniform across the world. They have given the example also. United States was attacked mostly with the identity theft, the personal data. And China was affected with the, uh, you know, technical products or services. So different countries were affected by different things. You no need to worry about, just understand. The important thing is, cyber crime has affected 9.2 trillion dollar of money. So, this was the lost by the whole world together uh, because of the cyber crimes and it is estimated to go beyond 13 trillion dollars by 2028. This data is important. Now, the most important data comes which are the most potent countries. This will be asked in the exam. The top three countries affected by cyber crimes are Russia, Ukraine, China. So, these three countries you need to remember. The score is out of 158 and India is ranked at 10th. India is ranked at 10th. So, this three and then this one you need to remember for the exam, right? So, this is about the cyber crime. Any doubts in this? Any doubts? Anyone? Let us move to the factual pointers. Uh, we have a few facts. First one, World Quantum Day. Quantum means it is a measuring of the working of the computers based on the qubits, right? Now it is working 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So based on 1 or 0, but now it can simultaneously do this. So World Quantum Day was observed on April 14th because the Planck's constant got discovered on that day, 4.14, right? So 4 is April, 14 is date, right? That's why we are celebrating. And the theme is, Raising a quantum ready workforce, the theme is important. 
raising a quantum ready workforce that is the theme next gopi totakura gopi totakura was the first indian pilot to venture into the space as a tourist first indian there are many other foreigners who went but first indian to venture into the tourism will be gopi totakura so this is also a fact next angara a5 rocket not satellite rocket is the instrument which uh, i mean the mechanism the machine that is used to launch the satellite so russia has successfully tested the highly advanced angara a5 rocket this is also fact to be remembered last fact adani green energy limited adani group has launched world's largest not only india's largest but world's largest renewable energy park in kavda kach region of gujarat so this is also fact to be remembered right so this are the sessions today let's uh, solve the mcqs for today any doubts in this if you have any doubts you can ask here right let's move to the first question which of the following statement is not correct this was asked in upsc civil services 2019 upsc 2019 civil services question so they are asking not correct hepatitis b virus is transmitted much like hiv so it is the first statement hepatitis b transmitted much like hiv first statement hepatitis b unlike hepatitis c does not have vaccine so they are saying that hepatitis b does not have vaccine but hepatitis c has a vaccine this is the second statement globally the number of people infected with hepatitis b and c virus are several times more than those infected by hiv so this is the third statement some of these infected with hepatitis b and c virus do not show the symptoms for many years so what is the answer for this first let's see the easy statement some of these infected uh, with the hepatitis b and c does not show symptoms for many years yes that's what we have discussed there is lot of there is no proper uh, sim symptoms seen that is the issue so first uh, this statement is correct several number of people infected with hepatitis b and c virus are several times more than dose of hiv right so this is also correct statement first one hepatitis virus or hepatitis b virus transmitted much like hiv blood transfusion we have discussed this as well so this a is also uh, correct so there is a vaccine for hiv oh, sorry hepatitis b but there is no vaccine for hepatitis c so this statement is wrong right so answer is b yes all of you have answered it as correct very good let's let's move to the next one this is also asked in upsc 2019 capf central armed police forces it is not civil services but capf water verifiable paper audit trial system was for the first time used in which elections they have asked right north parvur assembly constituency in kerala noksan assembly constituency in nagaland mapusa assembly constituency in goa nambol assembly constituency in manipur so we have seen this very direct question it is b noksan assembly constituency nagaland right next with regard to cyber frauds which of the following best defines the term doxing yes all of you have answered it as uh, uh, you know b someone have answered c i don't know why so what is the definition of doxing they are asking yes very good it is applied in 2013 so it is an attack in which perpetrators seek to make a network resources unavailable to its resources or users indefinitely disrupting the uh, you know utility so it is nothing but they are saying they will capture certain data and it will not enable them to use their own networks so that is the first thing malicious code inserted in the legitimate software that is the second one act of digitally publishing personal uh, private details 
that is the uh, third and then it is a process of acquiring personal and sensitive information of an individual via email by disguising a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication. So, what is the answer for third one? Yes. So, this is called as DDOS, DDOS. So, this is not for doxing. Second one, malicious code incessant individual legitimate uh, software. This is called as phishing or phishing. It is purpose of acquiring personal data, discussing trustworthy entity. So, this is something else. So, act of digitally publishing the person's private details. So, yes, 3 is C. It is not D. Okay. I do not know why few people, it is there is no email and all. It is just that the details are published. Next, which of the following statements about woofing cough is incorrect? About woofing cough, which are incorrect? It is highly contagious infection which impacts the respiratory tract. That is the first statement. It is caused by virus and there is no vaccine for the prevention of the disease. It is particularly severe in infants and in case of complications may lead to pneumonia and even death. It is only found in humans. So, what is the wrong statement they are asking? Yes, we have seen it is only affecting the humans, this is correct and particularly infants it is more complex right? and then it may cause even death and first one it is contagious and affecting the respiratory tract. It is not caused by virus, it is caused by bacteria and there is a vaccine. So, option B is wrong and hence is the correct answer. Last question for today, what is the main objective of PACE satellite? Yes, for most of you have answered it as correct, very good, of NASA. To estimate the life of ocean organisms, to create 36 mood bios in the high seas, uh, to collect high resolution ocean and atmospheric data, right? to estimate and predict the harmful algal booms in oceans, to map changes in land and cover the uh, and to monitor the world's forest. So, this is second statement is wrong because it is for Indus, Indian Ocean Monitoring System. So, B fifth one B is wrong and then to map changes in the land cover and to monitor world's forest. No, this is not related to the world forest. To estimate and predict the harmful algal booms in ocean. Yes, because planktons and all are observed. So, answer is C for fifth. It is not uh, to estimate the life. There is no estimation of life of organisms. It is very difficult. Okay? It is just to monitor. So, answer is C. And that is all for today's session. So, we have a very good science and technology articles. Try to remember them, try to revise them. Uh, you can expect a lot of questions for, from such type of articles. Right? So, keep subscribing and keep liking our videos uh, and have a great evening. Thank you.